Good evening, and we are live here at Spreaker. I am your host. I am Omienka 8 here on Spreaker Live. This is Omienka's Organic Broadcaster, and we are talking about health in this series. We will be talking about the indicated areas of diabetes, digestive and kidney failure problem in the black race. Is there a conspiracy? So I'd like for you to follow along with me. Uh, welcome back to those new comp to those old existing followers. Thank you so much for following me. And I say to those newcomers, welcome to the room. And I hope you find this your place where you can become a follower too. We are going to be talking about a series of health on this show because we are the organic broadcaster where we deal with health and healing and wellness. This is a wellness show. So I want to direct the African-American's attention, specifically the African-American attention and uh, more general, the general population who might not know of the epidemic that's running its uh, gamut in the area of African-American communities. And most African-Americans are just assuming that the diabetes, digestive, and kidney failure is basically systemic from uh, um, from uh, inheriting from a DNA. It is not an inherited disease. And as a matter of fact, it should not be categorized as diseases it should be a lifestyle and an environment. Now, because we know that sugar affects the pancreas and it will shut down the pancreas uh, or even prevent the pancreas from receiving insulin. So we know that those areas can be affected by glucose and sugar cane sugar, as one would like to think. But most African-Americans go into the doctor and they're immediately told or asked, is there an epidemic in your family of diabetes, uh, digestive, or kidney failure? Then they immediately assume that African-Americans are consuming a certain diet that will shut down the organs. Now, I tend to believe that there is a conspiracy. I strongly believe this because every household eats differently. So therefore, you cannot assume that this is a hereditary condition of diabetes, digestive problem, or having the kidneys to fail. It used to be a time that you did not see a large sum of African Americans on renal dialysis. Now they're popping, these renal dialysis centers are popping up in all the African American neighborhood, and the African Americans are there getting their kidneys filtered out and cleaning out the blood. Why is this happening? Have they become, have African-Americans start consuming a diet that is high in sugar? Uh, Maybe our sodas that are full of the cane sugar and glucose. And are they assuming the starches, the carbohydrates? Well, if that is the case, then... I am under the impression that these conditions can be reversed uh, by changing the environment and by looking at the carbohydrates and changing it. We've got to get a hold on this, people. We cannot let overlook this and say that uh, it is not our problem. It is our problem, and we definitely want to break this monotonous of having every other black person on uh, some type of stimulus pricking their finger every day, in addition to taking these um, various different caustic drugs to control this blood sugar. Can the blood sugar be controlled without these particular chemicals? And are they being controlled? There are several reports and statistical report right in the Diabetes Association where they've allowed an African-American or she might be African who have actually created an herbal product that she swears by that will cure diabetes, not 
just treat it. She swears by it. Now, I cannot confirm. Let me offer a disclaimer. We are not offering any cure for anything. I'm just reporting that there is a young lady who is with the Diabetes Council on the same website talking about her product that she's prescribing for African American. She's talking about how it will actually heal the uh, pancreas so that the pancreas can continue to produce insulin and, uh, and not have the problem with insulin resistance. African Americans are losing their limbs. They are having amputations quite a bit. Not only are they losing their limbs, they are becoming obese, grossly obese from the so-called cure or the so-called treatment of the drugs that they're giving to African Americans. They have uh, become so insulin resistant that all of this insulin builds up into the bloodstream and causes them to be extremely overweight. And usually what goes along with the diabetes is the high blood pressure as well. The blood pressure becomes elevated. And usually from being overweight, it starts with the blood pressure being elevated and then eventually causing your kidneys and your pancreas to start to have problems. Seems like to me, somebody had to have studied the African-American melanin uh, approach to find out if you took these things and put them in the African-American diet, would they be more susceptible to uh, diabetes, digestive, and kidney failure? And I think we can trace it back to looking at putting certain substance in a particular race of people's diet can very well cause them to have an onset weakness of these particular organs. Now, I am not telling anyone to cease and assist with their with their drug uh, uh, of choice of what the doctor may have prescribed. I am not telling anyone that we have a cure. I'm telling the families to look into this epidemic. Where is it coming from? And because we know it's not hereditary, then we must look at an epidemic of drugs and we must look at the foods that we're intaking and could it cause us to have a large rampant condition in these particular organ areas. So what we're saying is that once you go to the doctor and the doctor tests you for your blood sugar levels, ask them, what are my blood sugar levels? And ask them, what are the danger zones that could put you in a dangerous zone. Now, some doctors have been known to put patients on drugs who might not need to go on there. Be informed. Know exactly what numbers you are looking for so that you are not placed on this medicine because they are trying to gain a patient who is going to be a lifetime patient. Once you get prescribed with diabetes, or with digestive or kidney failure, you become a patient, a long-time patient. And that is a guarantee that you're going to come back to that doctor's office and get treated. Now, do we have to live our lives in this particular type of setting where we are at the mercy of the doctors, never uh, looking for a cure or never looking for the outcome that we can become better? These drugs do not cure anything. And I want it to be known. And if anybody says they do, they're a liar. These drugs are only to maintain. Are we looking for a cure or just to be maintained? Now, in the black race, you see most of these conditions. You don't see a high uh, condition of kidney failure or diabetes and digestive problem in the Caucasian's family. Why not? if they breathe the same air? Is it only in certain environments? We have to look into this. Number one, we are lacking the agents and doctors who specialize at the institution in the diabetes, digestive, and in the renal area. We must send more of our children to become investigators, uh, researchers in these areas. And there is a program that I've been supporting, and it's called the NIDDK. And that NIDDK is, stands for the National Institute 
of diabetes, digestive, and kidney disease. And this organization, every year, they recruit young people as a short-term education program for unrepresented, underrepresented persons in this area. And that means that there's not enough African Americans in this profession to help treat us and to do the research. So they reached out to those students who would like to be placed in the lab to start the process of learning how to become an agent. And at their first year of of their bachelor's degree, they can be given a scholarship to do research and to present their research to a panel. And it's very important that they start early to look for these young people. And parents, if you have children that are interested in science, I say get them started early. Let them apply for this short-term educational program. It is a stipend where they're given like $4,000 for their stay over the summer. Throughout the school year, they're working in laboratories. They're learning about these areas of diabetes, digestive disorder, and kidney failure. There are so many Black people on the waiting list waiting for a kidney. It doesn't have to be that way, uh, young people. If we begin to find solutions to our problems at an early age to offset this epidemic of having uh, uh, limbs extracted, toes and whole foots extracted to the point that they're, they're maiming people who get this Uh, indictment. Once you get this verdict of having diabetes, a large portion of these people begin to have circulation problems and gangrene in various different extremities. That is a horrible, horrible way to live under uh, insulin where you're insulin dependent and you're constantly having to take and prick your fingers several times a day and to take Uh, large sums of insulin that sometimes can settle in the bloodstream and cause you to become obese. This is a horrible thing. And more doctors need to be talking to African-American about how to circumvent this epidemic from happening in your family. And I'm speaking to the African-American people today and anybody else that has something to say about it who is not African-American, this doesn't include you. I'm speaking to our community about what we can do as a people to circumvent these diagnoses and to prevent so many people from having to take these various different uh, insulin drugs and become dependent on it. So as I talk to you about the, the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney you can go right online and there are a number uh, right there in the Diabetes Association. There are short clips on video tapes that will give you information about the early diagnosing of these conditions. And you can hear them right on the radio clip. And in addition, the Diabetes Association is now allowing other people that have alternative measures for curing this disease to talk about it. There are alternative procedures for treating this condition, and I won't say curing it, and I'm not going to use a cure here, and I want to repeat, we are not talking about curing anything. We're talking about treating it with alternative measures. But it's very vital that you should understand that it just can't be a a race of black people that are getting these diseases and that are perishing, then it looks like a conspiracy. It looks like somebody has set up the African-American people to be fingered out as being this condition being hereditary. It is not a hereditary condition. So why must it look like once your uncle get it, then your daughter's going to get it, then your niece going to get it? No, no. It doesn't work like that. This is an environmental condition, and it has something to do with food consumption. Now, we do know that the higher carbohydrates can bring these conditions on. Is carbohydrate deficiency a disease? No. It is a food uh, dietary problem that can be addressed. It is not something you were born here with and that you have to die with. 
So we have to get a grip on this as African Americans. Those of you who are in the science field, like I deal with the wellness of the of the foundations of science, I'm going to be bringing on many topics that will address the African American families uh, that they can do something about in a way of helping their family members so that they're not addicted to these drugs that can be highly, highly uh, caustic and highly dangerous. Sometimes the medication are creating more side effects than cures. And when we have medication that are preventing the insulin from getting in the bloodstream, then we have something called insulin resistant. Then if we have a person that's not producing enough insulin in their pancreas, then we have a sick pancreas that has to be addressed. So we can do something more than what we've been doing. And we can take uh, a hold of this and get out in the front of this epidemic. It is truly an epidemic. And the blacks are being taken out and destroyed by this. Now, we know that the African-Americans carry melanin. And that is a substance in our body that helps us to fight off various different diseases. Has anybody been looking into the melanin to find out how the melanin can be uncalcified to help individuals like African-Americans better fight off and ward off these diseases, such as the renal dialysis and such as the kidney failure and the digestive disorder? Can we look at our melanin and go to our melanin to see if it's going to assist and aid us? We must look at those areas, but we certainly can't just shoo it off and say, well, it's an epidemic and we're going to get it no matter what. It is not true. You do not have to get diabetes because your mother had it. You do not have to get renal dialysis problem because your father had it. It is not an epidemic. And I repeat, so to anyone that is perpetuating that lie, we need to stop that lie from going forward. Now, we are not offering a cure to anyone. We're talking about changing your diet. We're talking about getting educated, getting educated through the doctors that are doing further research in the non-drug therapy area. And there are many people that are in other parts of the country, uh, maybe Africa, Jamaica, who are coming up with solution in, with solutions that individuals can take to help get their diabetes under control without using drugs. Now, there are plenty of non-drug therapies like SMART uh, vitamins that are out there that they are creating through herbalization and through various different products, like uh, helping to get that, that, uh, that glucose running properly in the body. But we certainly have to understand that we cannot let somebody put the verdict out on us that we're condemned people and that we're all going to have diabetes, kidney failure, uh, renal, renal dialysis, as well as digestive problems. We have to address this, and we have to address it immediately. I became very interested in, in the medical area of research as a medical records specialist working in the area of medical records, well, information and health, uh, I think you would call it information and health technician. And it took us to researching and understanding the history of the medical field and then looking at the medical records, how to actually uh, process the medical records and make sure that the proper diagnosis is put on there. I think a lot of people may have been misdiagnosed for diabetes inappropriately, and then they immediately start sticking themselves with the needle and going on the actual um, insulin without a second opinion. May I remind you, you do have a right to a second opinion for a diagnosis with your medical insurance. Your Medicare will allow you to have that second opinion. Sometimes they may read the test incorrectly, or sometimes the test does not show you have it at all when you do. Now, if the blood sugar levels are elevated, then there must be something done to bring them down because there is a possibility of a stroke, uh, of you going into a coma, 
all these things are real and they do happen for real. But can you use alternative measures to treat? I did not say heal, but to treat these conditions. Yes, you can. There are several alternative products that are out on the market that are not drug therapy and that have been very successful in maintaining the blood sugar levels to bring them down to a more reasonable level. Now, when you see a person that's overweight and that is very, very heavy in the midriff, more than likely you also suggest that there might be a possibility for diabetes if they're already suffering from high blood pressure. So you want to check your sugar, your blood sugar level, if you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure. Can high blood pressure be controlled? Yes, it can. And it can be controlled with non-drug therapies. There are alternative measures out there. And when we, when we see a lot of Black people who are put on these beta blockers is to block the fat uh, or the uh, fat that can accumulate in the blood vessel. Sometimes you need fat, but you need the good fat so that it will help you prevent the the, uh, third diabetes, it's type 3 diabetes, which is Alzheimer's condition. Did you not know there was a type 3 that actually creates Alzheimer's condition where a lack of fat in the brain will cause diabetes? You need, you need that, uh, that, that good fat that will help the brain to function. You just cannot take a person off all essential fatty acids and think that they're going to survive having uh, having. I guess you would call it Alzheimer's or having selective memory. But most people suffer from the third stage of diabetes, and that is where you go into Alzheimer's condition for, from a lack of essential fat. And we must be educated on the good fats. Our eggs are not bad. Our bacon is not bad. Anything that accumulates those uh, two different strands of fat will give us the fat that will help us uh, guard and, 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 and deplete the fat in our body, which will help us become leaner and to lose weight and to give us the fat we need in our brain to function with. So we cannot just go on these uh, beta blockers and think that they're going to be a cure-all. They could cause side effects. And you need to look into these options and alternative treatments for the body. Now, just as we've gotten ourselves into a bad stage of inability to process carbohydrates, we can relearn how to eat well. And that's what we should be doing, looking at how are we going to change our diets to eat well so that we are not just consuming a bunch of the one string fat. The run stream fat, I repeat, are not good for you, but you must look at the two stream fatty acids that are out there and have an understanding of it. A lot of this you can do on your own uh, matrons. When you go to the doctor, ask them, can they assign you to a nutritionist, someone that can help you get on the right dietary foods. Don't just take a diagnosis and run home with the drug. Make sure you're making some changes in your home So you can lower your own blood sugar without synthetic products that are forcing themselves into your body with insulin to force down the blood sugar. It's a whole process when we talk about the pancreas. The pancreas can be uh, addressed. You can start looking at researching the pancreas. Can you heal the pancreas? Can you get it functioning again? Can it be survived? Can you survive? Can you revive the pancreas? Can you revive the kidney? And is there any type of revival for your digestive system? There are tons of things out like uh, uh, appropriate to take for the digestive system. We have got to get more involved when it comes to the National Institute for 
diabetes, digestive, and for kidney failure and disease. We've got to get involved and on these committees and supporting these organizations. And I've been supporting them for a long time. I've been recommending young people to go and apply for the scholarship, to be on the team, to go and work in the laboratories with doctors. I was fortunate. I once had a chance to go and work in the pathologist laboratory, right alongside the pathologist, uh, producing the slides so that he could examine the specimens for cancer, working in the diner to help him to do the actual uh, research in the diner where they were actually doing the autopsies. So yes, young people can get involved in the laboratory and do laboratory work and present their own research to be competitive when they go down state and they are selected based on their particular uh, research work. This will help them to get ready to become an agent where if they're coming out of undergrad college, they can look at getting accepted into this program where they work with them from their bachelor's degrees to their master's degree, all the way to their PhD when they become an agent. Because of the shortage that we have of these agents that work in these particular areas of African-American focus, we are doing everything we can to get young people interested in the science field so that they can come into the science field, work directly with the doctors, do the research, and gather up their findings on their projects that they present. And I urge you parents, if you have young children that are gifted in science, begin to look into these areas that are so significant to African-Americans and tell them about these areas where we need agents and researchers and doctors, and they can be a part of it at an early age. This institute for the National Institute for uh, uh, Kidney and, and, and digestive system, they are working alongside of these young people, along with organizations like the University of Maryland in Baltimore County, uh, Virginia, Commonwealth University, Children, Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, and Penn and Permanent, I think it's Penn, okay and Penn State University. They are all working together for young people to come and do their intern with them, to help them get girded up in this area of renal dialysis, diabetes, as well as digestive, so that they will have their specialty in this area for working with African-American people, specifically African-American people. They they focus in on the African American race because they are having the most terrible time with these diseases and no one is addressing this to get more agents and doctors that are African Americans descend. And this is called the Step Up Program, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Step Up Program, uh, the short term education program for underrepresented persons. This would be underrepresented people in this field who are not African-American. They need more African-American doctors, and they are un underrepresented in this, in this profession. So we're doing everything we can to get more young people trained in this area. I would suppose, parents, the way you can uh, put your two cents in is to have your child to inquire about this program at their school so that they can start early and working in the laboratories, learning how to do the research work and exploring these conditions of African-Americans. Now, I want you to know that we can make a change in our community with our, our consumption changing of the carbohydrates so that we not only go on a non-carbohydrate diet, but we look at what does fats really do to our bodies and how we can continue to consume good fats and still be healthy. You don't have to give your eggs up or your bacon because they're highly loaded with the, uh, the two-strand fat that will definitely uh, help your body 
and protect your body from diabetes. Now, we can do a number of things to protect our body from diabetes. If you're consuming alcohol, you need to leave alcohol alone. It will definitely affect the kidneys and it will cause the body to be edemia and swell and have much fluids that you have to uh, defecate to release. It's very important that we know something about what the food is going to do that we put in our body. We have to know how fastly we're going to process it and how fast we're going to get it out of the body. Just because you get it into the body, you must know how the body is going to process the sugars and how is your body going to be able to break down the sugar. And if your body cannot tolerate glucose levels that are high, you're eating high sucrose from these beverages that have all the sucrose in it. Even I now have been very much turned on that you you don't want to drink the sugary drinks. Leave out the sucrose drinks and drink just the uh the carbon drinks that just have the carbon water and if you like the if you like the bubbly water. But you cannot keep assuming the sucrose and the sugars. These sugars are not good for you. It causes the pancreas to go on alert and it breaks down the pancreas. But it's good to know that you do have an actual uh, radio station that is focusing on wellness and health and mind, body, soul, and spirit. And I will be talking to some of the wellness centers about their software and how it's very necessary for you to have specific software that is used for the wellness clinics. If you have a wellness spa or clinic, um, I will be able to give you information on what type of software you can use to more readily process your clients that come in to your center. And there are a lot of spas out there, not only physical exercise, but there's spas for wellness center. And there is also spas out there for raindrop therapy. And raindrop therapy is a good source to use because it helps to work with the spinal cord and making sure that the body is ridding itself of all the toxins. Now, this particular site is Mind, Body, and Spirit, and we deal with organic broadcasters. So we are going to be dealing with things that are necessarily connected to the processing of, of, of our natural herbs and how to use the natural herbs and how to create uh, fusions and tinctures because we, we must go back to our, uh, our traditional heritage of looking at how we cure ourselves and each individual is a scientist. We all have the ability to work on healing ourselves. And we must get the proper tools so that we are ready to first examine ourselves. When we first become sick, we must first examine ourselves and assess ourselves. Because there's nothing that the doctor can tell you that you can't already tell the doctor about what's been going on in your body. And you should take assessment of your body and document what is going on with your body. But it is very vital that African Americans take heed for the digestive system. We see that once a patient gets on diabetes medicine, they suddenly blow up and gain all sorts of weight. And around the midriff is where they blow up. And the women blow up in their buttocks and their thighs. And they keep thinking this is normal from their diet, but it's not normal. The insulin that you're taking, you may be insulin resistant, and that insulin may be building up in your blood vessels, and it could be causing the the excessive weight gain. Look into it. Talk to your doctor about it. Make sure you discuss it with your doctor, but also look into other alternative treatments that are non-drug therapy. Because sometimes the drug can be more of a problem than the actual the cure. They can cause more of a problem when they're not curing anything, and now you got a big side effect, and you have to switch up on drugs. But it's very important that you don't just get up and take the first uh, diagnosis that you get. You are entitled to a second diagnosis, so you can get a second opinion, so you can find out what is it that causes my blood sugar to rise? Am I doing specific things? Am I eating things at a certain time? How can I normalize my blood sugar? 
And is it possible that I can do it with alternate drug treatments? And look into that because there are many chiropractors out there that work with alternative drug treatments to a lot of conditions. And remember, diabetes is not a disease. It is, a, it is a condition that comes from the actual consumption of food. And it doesn't have anything to do with a disease that is hereditary. So just because your mother and father have it, it does not mean that you're going to necessarily get it. If your dietary laws are completely different from theirs. We have got to get a handle on this. We've got to get our young people to get into this step-up program uh, for the short-term education program uh, for underrepresented individual. We are underrepresented in the medical field when it comes to renal dialysis specialists or pancreas specialists. We don't have enough researchers that are Black in the profession that can help. So now we're going to have to be informed you have to definitely stay informed. We need more young people to get into this field. So now that you know, mother, you can enroll your child to compete for the scholarship and then get them involved in the program to help treat African-Americans who have diabetes, digestive, and kidney disease and get them started early. There's a lot of money to be made in this profession for those hard to fill areas and and for the underrepresented, uh, uh, I guess you call them investigative agents. There is a lot of money to be made in this profession. And many African-Americans are not even applying because they don't think that they have the aptitude. But there is a lot of professors that are willing to help you as you come in to work in the laboratories, to do research with them, and then to go on to present your findings and your research. And then after you finish college, then looking at going for your master's degree and your PhD degree in this profession of working specifically with kidney failure, digestive uh, disorders, and also diabetes. And we want to keep this in our psychic because there's a lot of black people that are completely being hospitalized for this condition, who are losing their limbs and who are also having amputation, double, double amputation, and they are not going to get better this way because they have not found a cure. However, if you change your diet and eating habit, you can circumvent having the strokes and from having the amputation, and you can live with the condition as long as you are treating it appropriately. But don't think that it don't exist and it will go away. You must know that you must be treating it and find an alternative way of treating it. But it's very vital that we should really uh, think about getting our children involved in the science area because it is a thoroughly underrepresented profession. However, there's a great need for the African-Americans to come into this line of work. I wish I had found out about it before I got my master's, but uh, I had had an interest in working in the lab because I worked in histology and cytology as well as pathology. And I gained a lot of experience and I want to pass that on to some of your youngsters because I've been talking about the foundations of science and anatomy and uh, medical terminology. These are foundational courses that will help get you started. So if you'd like to contact me about these classes, I can get you all set up to take those classes if you are on a path. I hope you are on a path. But African-Americans, you must be conscious of the fact that there are more African-Americans getting diagnosed with diabetes than ever before, as well as with pancreas failure. I know about these things uh, I've had family members that have had pancreas failure, and I continue to educate myself on the diet and changing the diet and looking at uh, non-drug therapy for treating the early onset of diabetes. And you can take that responsibility in your own hand. Don't let anybody force you or tell you that there is no other cure for it but the drugs. The drugs are not a cure either. So you do have an option of working with a dietitian and someone to help you look at alternative measures for healing yourself. 
Now, I want to say that this is going to be a series. This is one part. This is the first episode of the series of looking at the diseases. Well, well, I won't say diseases. Of looking at diabetes, digestive disorder, and kidney disease. And I don't want to say disease. I want to say disorder because it can be reversed with the proper health. And those of you out there who are asking about the high blood pressure, th- these diseases are usually connected too. Uh, so don't, don't fail to ask your doctor about how can I cure my high blood pressure alternatively. You must understand that we've been told a lie about stay away from fats. All fats are bad for you. Don't take any cholesterol, no eggs. That's, that's all been a lie. They've just recently discovered that cholesterol is needed in our body. And we must make uh, a, a change in our life to re-include the bacon back in and looking at the eggs that can give us the healthy cholesterol, the two string. There are different types of eggs. All eggs are not made equal. So you must make sure you have fats back in your diet so you can prevent the third diabetes, uh, third, the th- third stage of diabetes, and that is working with Alzheimer's disease. It's another form of diabetes that affects the cholesterol. Let's get on top of this thing and let's start researching and learning more than anybody else can tell us. We have to do the work for ourselves. We have to put the work in. When a disease is populated in the African-American race, we should be the first on top of it. And that's why I'm getting at the head of this diabetes organization to find out more from the National Diabetes Organization to be a part and support what is going on in the alternative care. I am strictly for the alternative care. I am not a part of the drug therapy to push that. Because I believe, for me, it was the best thing to do alternative drug measures, which will help me to maintain conditions. So I want everyone to know that there are some people who are still suffering that are on the drugs and still have an amputation and still struggling. So they have to get at the forefront of their condition as well and have someone to help them to find alternative ways of treating these three main deadly conditions, diabetes, digestive problem, and kidney failure. We want to get at the forefront of this to help our African Americans get a handle on how we can best treat ourselves to circumvent having our limbs amputated and to circumvent having strokes and to losing our ability to function as individual people. Now, I did say something about the melanin and looking into melanin to see how melanin can be used to treat these conditions. And melanin is being looked at just as we speak. And there are many doctors that are finding out that the melanin is like a cure-all for the African-American. And they've been looking into the melanin and how it's used in the body. Let's keep looking. Let's keep struggling to show ourselves strong, to get at the forefront of this disease or these diseases that are plaguing the African-American homes. We do not want this in our home, and we do not want to be labeled as somebody in the family who has a condition that, that the next person will readily get it. It doesn't have to be so. This is not a hereditary, these are not hereditary diseases. These are diseases that are consumed through environmental. So please know this. I'd like to thank you so much for going all the way with us. And we look forward to seeing you again. There will be a series of these talks. So stay tuned. Thank you so much, Streaker, for servicing me. And my followers, thank you so much for being my follower. And I do hope you tune in to our next show on kidney, digestive, and... (laughs) And... Well, I said kidney, digestive, and diabetes condition. Thank you so much. And you've been listening to Maggie Harvey's baby sister, Odabo.